you've uh, you've encountered and how you, how you've uh, how you have addressed them. Um, mm -hmm. Would do you have any final comments before I before I bring on uh, Kendrick and um, and Nick back onto the the screen? So I, I would really only uh, like to, to to get into the um, how how APIs uh, um, so how the okay. natural uh, development of the APIs. Uh, oh okay. So the digital ecosystems uh, facilitated through the the, the connections uh, of APIs will only um, be. Uh, developed, fully developed once uh, the digital identification mm -hmm. uh, uh, gets into place. And there uh, is a yeah. full um, European context called uh, EIDAS um, that uh, has uh, a regulation uh, that has the, the, uh, developed an ecosystem and uh, uh, that even has um, an API context uh, developed. You, you didn't have the links in, in, in this um, slide. And um, yeah, I, I, I was also gonna try, I, I thought it, I had 25 minutes and um, so that's why I thought, uh, yeah. And yes, we're, we're at the so, 25 minute mark, but I mean, what, what, what I think you, you're talking about uh, EIDAS is, is important because what we saw with uh, Nick and also uh, Kendrick earlier is that um, uh, digital identity seems to be the foundation uh, yeah. of, of citizen services. And uh, Nick, for example, uh, talked about the New South Wales uh, state government initiative. Um, mm -hmm. where, whereas uh, in Europe, of course, you have several countries, each one of which has their own national digital identity uh, strategy. And uh, mm -hmm. so perhaps perhaps you, you could talk a little bit about that so we can understand the context of how the um, how the digital identity is addressed in in Europe and uh, and then we can match that to uh, how it's being addressed in the other locations. Yes, so uh, the thing is that uh, indeed uh, the, the, the electronic ID uh, it, it, uh, it's considered one of the um, of the uh, enablers of the of the blooming of the um, European digital single market, and therefore uh, there has been a regulation that was uh, developed in, in 2014, uh, where um, all member states are are uh, meant to to, um, to to set up this um, electronic ID system. Uh, at national level, but that not only at national level, there has to be an interconnection between the whole, the, all the set, all the all the partners of the uh, European Union. So um, we we uh, there is a defined um, electronic ID ecosystem, and uh, lately there have been a development of a, of a, an API. Uh, that will enable and, and facilitate the, um, the connection between uh, the, 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 um, uh, trans uh, the, the transactions performed um, between different actors uh, and different countries in, in Europe. And, um, and uh, yeah, this API will facilitate uh, the connection um, through through the through the whole um, digital yeah. chain. So, so that's about mutual recognition of digital identities in each yes. country. So, I, I guess what I'm I'm interested in uh, comparing that to. Um, I'm not sure I can compare it directly to Singapore because, being a city state. Uh, Singapore has the advantage of, of having one national identity, and uh, uh, th there is no um, other other level of government with with their own identity scheme. But certainly in Australia, uh, which is is federated, um, Nick was talking about um, the the New South Wales digital driver's license. Um, I, I guess I'm I'm interested in how um, perhaps. Nick, you could let us know if there is a move to, towards trying to harmonise the different state identities into a into a federal identity uh, along how 
how Europe is doing it or whether you expect there to be another approach? Uh, I think the, the most likely scenario, and we're, we're some way away from that, is that the state and federal um, start to get together and become a bit closer. Um, there's, there's two things I want to mention. So the user cases for state to state um, are less important than the uses from uh, federal to state. So if we can get your passport, um, your um, social health care, which is called Medicare in Australia, and those other things talking to your local um, state level requirements like the, the, the driver's license, there's a hell of a lot of user cases we can uh, we can see um, with, with with those elements. Where I think it becomes truly interesting is when we move beyond uh, government and we move to uh, thinking about the country as a whole uh, and how we can I see unify a single identity um, that that may involve. Um, Banking, it may involve a telco, it may involve a number of different areas. So in Australia, we have a, something called the, the TD framework, which is an identity framework to start to centralize beyond government, start to centralize those, those elements. The reason it works there is because we've got four big banks, three major telcos and two major retailers. So we're in a position to start to, to pull those things together and Look, it's a it's a long journey, but the um, the user cases and the benefits down the road are, are, are really strong. So we would encourage, um, and we are indeed working to, towards meeting those goals and supporting various organisations. Do, do you think it needs something like an EIDAS standard that uh, that is being uh, uh, the approach taken in, in Europe in order to to harmonise and, and the mutual recognition or um, I mean, you talked about the importance of, of state connecting with federal rather than state to state connections. But mm -hmm. um, if the, each of the state digital identities uh, is um, connects to the federal in a different way, then that complicates matters. Certainly. And I think there's many headwinds in different areas. And we're actually working in um, a society and a legislative uh, body that, that can make it actually quite challenging to start moving identity. Identity in its essence is personal information. Um, with GDPR uh, and in Australia it's called, it's the OIC guidelines. Um, with increasing regulation and standards and policies, um, things like Know Your Customer, KYC, that's coming out of the, uh, the, the banking domain. Um, it, it's making the, uh, the journey a little bit more challenging um, so, so for me, my encouragement would be to take um, a software engineering agile mentality towards this and let's get something stood up and working um, and then layer in the regulation and standards and other things we need to do as we start to, to get adoption. So um, my concern is that we, we're, we're working in such a, a, a complex and, and challenged space that um, we don't reach the critical mass that enables the solution to really take off. Um, and I think that would be a, a, a shame for in terms of an outcome. So, so is adoption, the rate of adoption that would really drive the, the value then? We, we need a core mass. We need a critical mass of users, like any platform, like any ecosystem. If you don't have the users, um, you know, then, then it's a, a relatively worthless proposition, right? So we look at any platform, um, any, any new initiative, we need to start getting volume through there and users through there. And, and uh, beyond anything else, um, uh, it's our view that that's the type of focus that should be um, should be driven forward. Um, and, and as we do that, um, yes, we can lay in more security, more standards, but we've got to get off to the races. You know, we have to we have to start uh, building that user base. Mm -hmm. So there are a few questions in the chat. Um, both earlier during uh, Kendrick's presentation at the start of the day and, and also during your, your presentation, Nick and, and Monica. Um, one of them, uh, Kendrick, there, there was somebody who was impressed with the, the My Info service and how it can help you open a bank account, but it doesn't work if the Singapore doesn't, government doesn't know anything about you because it, it is based on the, the SingPass um, 
and the national digital identity. But um, so just speaking of that and given um, the European initiative um, of EIDAS to, to harmonize the national digital identities across Europe, uh, is, is Singapore working on harmonizing any um, uh, nation to nation digital identity? All right. So, so maybe let me begin by uh, saying that, I mean, first and foremost, we're talking about uh, national digital identities, mm -hmm. right? And hence the focus, the initial, initial focus at least of any digital identity will need to be on the local population, mm -hmm. right? And I think that would be the same for uh, all of us, right? In the sense that we want to focus on being able to identify the, the citizens and the residents, right? So there'll be people who live here, people who work here, uh, not, uh, and not just, you know, the citizens per se, right? So I think that's the starting point. Uh, in my keynote, I actually mentioned that uh, uh, Singapore's success over the last 55 years has been built upon us being an open and connected global city, right? And I also said that uh, it's involved uh, 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 interoperability. And I think the part that I perhaps didn't mention so much this morning because I I thought it might be a more local audience, was that it also involves putting in place uh, legal and trust frameworks, right, that allow uh, cross-border trade. Right? So there's cross-border flow of people, uh, cross-border flow of goods, and cross-border flow of money, right? which is why we are a financial center, we are a, a sea port, we are, we are a global node in, a, in, the, in the sea uh, transport and our air transport as well, right? And so if you think about it, it, it does suggest that while you put in place a a digital infrastructure for the digital age, right? Then you would require uh, something similar uh, uh, in the digital space, right? So, what would be the infrastructure? Or what would be that framework, right? And, and at some point, uh, uh, the European framework EI does, for example, would be important, right? And, and at some point, uh, uh, other uh, frameworks would be important to allow bilateral cross border uh, transactions to be to take place digitally. All right, so so I so I, I'm not just so, so I think uh, uh, we are actually uh, an observer in the EIDAS proceedings, right? So we are familiar, and basically we are looking at uh, the point where uh, we may need to establish equivalence, right, between the Singapore digital identity, right, and say EIDAS, right, and there are several levels, and and, and each of these levels uh, require uh, legislation, right, equ equ equivalent legislation. Uh, to be in place, for example. So we do have those legislation under the Electronic Transaction Act, mm -hmm. uh, but it's slightly different from what's uh, in Europe, and we have to do uh, the mapping to see where it maps level to level. Having said that, uh, we have also announced uh, 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 joint projects or intend to do joint projects uh, with various jurisdictions. Uh, we announced one with the EU, uh, we announced one with Australia, and we announced uh, with some other countries, where we talked about potentially interoper interoperating our digital identity schemes, right? Those, so those projects are at the stage where we're trying to identify use cases uh, that is relevant to both uh, jurisdictions, territories, right? So we can take that uh, forward and to allow, so the important thing is this, right? It, it is to allow the residents of each territory to be able to transact in the other territory as if he was a local using the digital identity issued by his home state All right so those are those are in progress mm -hmm. thank, thank you for that uh, for that insight um another question that came in up in the chat was about um partnerships with with business and um and how other um services uh, non-government services may may use the the apis and i think that the my info service is a, is a great example of something that the government has enabled, uh, particularly for financial institutions, to, uh, to, to onboard customers, uh, banks, uh, insurers. Um, and when Eric gave his presentation earlier about the Safe Entry API, he was talking about how they'd actually, GovTech had actually been approached by uh, the, the management of several large facilities, office buildings and so on, because uh, for visitors, they have a, uh, they now have a two-step 
uh, registration process for entry into a into a facility and they wanted to harmonize that um, I'd be interested in, in hearing from in, any of the panel members about um, some really key uh, initiatives that have um, that have been taken up by business because of the availability of of an API that uh, that a government has uh, has exposed I, I think Monica you mentioned a couple so, um, I, and I'm just checking the, uh, my, my, I have a couple of slides actually. Uh -huh. So, um, at the European level, what I know is that uh, there are different uh, points on where the private, private sector can, can get into the uh, EIDAS ecosystem. So, um, you can even be an um, a identity provider but you have to follow certain the, the, the regulation and uh, and so on. So every member state will have a certain kind of uh, organizations that are um, uh, uh, identity providers um, and, and they will have to be uh, trusted and so on. Then you can also be, you can always be a, a consumer side on, on, on the, um, on the uh, digital identity. Or uh, so so uh, and and also you 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 can also be the one that is uh, the channel no so the the, the one that is um, facilitating the the the, the uh, recognition but then uh, that's that's all mm -hmm. um, uh, apart from that uh, in in uh, so in. The, 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 what, what we've seen so far and um, our scope on, on the studies are, are mostly on government. So we've seen um, a number of, um, um, so mo mostly uh, what we have seen is that, for instance, in France, there is already some uh, relationships with, uh, with uh, uh, the private sector on uh, mobility, on, uh, on finance, uh, and uh, energy and telco services. So, uh, and that has also been observed in uh, other countries. I think uh, Croatia is one of them, and uh, Estonia has also a number of, uh, of services that uh, are partly um, produced also by the private sector. So there is already this ecosystem and this uh, diffusion between government and uh, so public sector and private mm -hmm. sector um, facilitated through, through yeah. APIs. Yeah. So, so that seems to be what's, what's based on, on information that the government holds about people, uh, identity. And I think, um, Nick, I'll, I'll point to you in a moment because the the consumer data right regulation that's coming into into force in Australia is starting with the banking industry, um, but is the the government's intention is to allow uh, people to authorise the sharing of their data with with third parties um, in the healthcare industry, telecommunications, and utilities. Uh, yes, I think we. We really respect the uh, the noble intentions of the uh, consumer data right, and the the work there is about empowering consumers to enable them to be able to change. We have a natural monopoly or oligopoly based system in Australia. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, three telcos, four banks, two retailers, um, and it means that they they can get a, a really strong stranglehold on the industry. So. The, the need for open banking, um, open energy, and other open elements is really helping um, drive some some change into the system. We believe that that's one of the foundational pieces. It's not everything, but it's a really foundational piece to uh, empowering consumers. We think the other piece that's going to sit on another cornerstone is identity, as we've rightly said. You know, it's the ability for me to be known once by a trusted organization and not known separately by by everybody um, and that gives me the facility as a consumer then to start to seamlessly move between banks the ability to move my telco provider without going through a lot of challenges transferring my mobile phone number um, and so we're seeing these early 
element. And it's not uh, in its uh, maturity yet, and it's not reached a position where consumers are able to do that. But with, with those foundational pieces in place, we can really start to drive some user cases that can empower consumers. And we're, we're immensely excited about uh, those things. Those. Thanks. Thanks for that insight. Um, one one other thing I wanted to pick up on, um, which I, I think is uh, a pretty common challenge across all all government uh, organisations, is that government departments have have grown up individually, um, the uh, 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 serving serving citizens or, or residents in a certain way. Uh, the driver's license, as you mentioned, Nick. Um, was initiated by the, um, the 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 authority that governs the the roads because obviously the road users um, need to be identified. Um, but it because of the rate of adoption and the number of people who have driver's license that they are able to leverage that in in other areas. But there are health services, there are other community services, uh, government services that are each provided by a different government, I, a different government department. I'd be interested to understand your, your experience about what it uh, what it takes to draw together different uh, government departments to uh, to share their their resources um, and to work on a common set of, of APIs for for sharing of, of data and services. You want me to take that one? I, I, the hot one, so I'll let I'll let Loren, Lorenzino take that one. <laughs> Yeah, if I may add something, uh, just a couple of words on on uh, also something that uh, uh, Monica was introducing about the one of the experiences we have with the member states. What they they were we found a lot of guidelines about technical aspects. So the ones that in the API days and in our presentation we usually highlights but uh, very few guidelines about the governance, for example. So how to make the people agree uh, on when they have to merge their APIs, when they have to merge their models and structures and so on. And this is what we try to solve as a, an additional output of our studies with the, the document that Monica was presenting about, the, let's say, uh, um, um, a common or a high, a high level uh, uh, framework for APIs for governments uh, at national, uh, regional and local level. And in this framework, we highlight the aspects, uh, not only the technical ones, but also the one at department level and the one at, at the government level. Uh, when different de departments have to join their APIs, as, as in the presentation of, of Nick, it was talking about the, the, one of the major problems was the coordination between different departments. So mm -hmm. we try to merge mm -hmm. the experiences that we have with the member states and the demand that we have with them. We have a working group uh, with the member states. We are working with them and try to build with them this kind of solution that we can propose at the, um, um, let's say, coordination level between the member states. Oh, inside the government and also around the European Union, because we, mm -hmm. as you know, as, as you said, we have an extra level of coordination, which is the European Union, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's quite difficult. But we are trying to solve it with the set, the, these building blocks that we are building for the electronic uh, identification, for the signature, for the exchange of data sets and documents, and and so on. Mm. So, um, but. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Monica. Just starting up, if, if I may, uh, uh, thanks, thanks to Lorenzina, and, and uh, just a tiny a little comment on it. So uh, also in the study that we've done and the case studies that, uh, that we've analyzed, what we've observed is that uh, um, there are a few, uh, few initiatives already that have uh, the digital ecosystem mindset. Uh, and um, those who are more advanced, um, their, their experiences uh, have, set, have, have um, uh, something in common, and is that uh, it's very difficult at the beginning to start making the relationships and, 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 and coordinating uh, at, at a multi-department, uh, multi-level uh, government aspect. But mm -hmm. once it starts, it's um, very organic. So it, uh, it, it becomes really a, a, an ecosystem. So you start uh, by imposing the meetings and talking about how to get uh, 
how how to 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 um, get the best for everyone and so on. Uh, but then there is one moment, there is a, a, an inflection point on in which the the um, the API infrastructure or the digital ecosystem takes uh, life, and then it it grows uh, naturally. Mm. So it, so it's like API building a, a so it's like building a big snowball. You start with a small snowball and you roll it down a hill, and it gets bigger on the way. That's true, and and uh, we see that uh, then then uh, the APIs start being used in many places, and then it it grows. Uh, I mean, the region of Lombardy that we uh, analyze very in depth um, have a lot of these uh, many 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 mm. uh, API services um, talking and on digital on on different uh, digital agencies, and uh, in the end they have developed in in no time. I mean, in, in less than one year. Uh, uh, quite a number of new digital solutions um, by mm. integrating different uh, mm. digital assets. Mm. Thank you. I, I should not have used a snowball analogy in Singapore. I realise we haven't done <laughs> snowballs here in many years. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we, there is one final question in the chat that I thought we would raise. Uh, it is. I'm not sure if there's a good answer for it. Um, but it perhaps relates to the reason why we're doing everything online right now. And the question from Rika in the chat is um, one of the discussions with COVID-19 is the idea of some form of health passport. Um, Nick, you mentioned an announcement by uh, the, the Australian Prime Minister uh, recently about requiring people to have a vaccination. Uh, and that's probably perhaps one one aspect of a, of a health passport. Um, do you... Do any of the panel members see a health passport on the, on the horizon, or is there any discussion of that? Nick? Uh, yeah, I mean, without without a doubt, we're going to work in a in a world that is going to require us to have, um, in order to travel globally, um, some higher level of of health requirement. Um, I know the the details around that uh, don't exist, but I can I can assure you the. Um, the rails and framework around the technology are already sort of emerging. Um, so there's every expectation that um, whether it's a vaccination or uh, your recent test results, um, there's a high expectation that um, for things like international travel, it's extremely likely you're going to need to take a couple of credentials um, to the airport. One will be a passport uh, and the other one will be that health requirement. So. What we can do in the, in that API digital world, I think, is is come under the the microscope and really be a focal point um, in the in the next sort of eighteen months um, to, to two years as this thing starts to roll out. Well, thanks, thanks for that. Nick. Um, if any of the other panel members have something to to add, um, uh, Kendry, Lawrence, no. COVID indeed is, is, is a very yeah. a very important topic for, mm -hmm. for Europe as well, and uh, mm -hmm. there has been some uh, some uh, ideas uh, on, on some discussions on on uh, whether uh, uh, health passports uh, um, should be uh, taken into into consideration. Uh, so far, uh, there is still a lot of um, unsolved cash, uh, answers to this because uh, it, it has a lot of uh, implications on uh, whether you can be rejected for certain things. And then mm -hmm. uh, you obviously have to ensure that uh, citizens are the same and equal and so on. Yeah. So at the moment, uh, there, are, there are thoughts and, and, and it's, been, it's, it's, it's been under evaluation, but the Europe has not yet got any any uh, big uh, or strong uh, position on, on mm -hmm. that. Um, it's still analyzing it indeed. Okay. Yes, Kendra. So John, uh, thanks for the question. I actually have uh, three comments on this. I think the first comment is around technology. The technology for this, uh, we've already seen several uh, companies, right, uh, including international companies, uh, um, coming to us with prototypes to say, look, you know, this is what a health passport could look like. It's based on DLT, right? And uh, potentially it could be used to prove that uh, you know, it's safe, it, that you're healthy enough to travel to enter a country and so on and so forth, right? So firstly, is that te the technology uh, sort of exists. Some people are already uh, trying to market mm -hmm. that in, in the market. Second point is that at the end of the day, uh, coming, going back to the original question about EIDAS and trust frameworks, 
uh, this will only work uh, in the context of mutual recognition between countries, right? So it's not just about testing the, te the, trusting the technology, but trusting the, the, the test regime, uh, you know, the number of cases in the country and so on and so forth. So, so that framework needs to exist as well. Uh, on the third point, which is perhaps a bit closer to what we are doing, is that uh, in Singapore, we have something called Open Certs, which is a DLT-based uh, system, right, that allows uh, organizations to issue sort of certificates, such as a drone license, driving license, and so on and so forth, but no reason why it cannot be a, a healthy to travel uh, certificate, for example. All right. So, so I think what we're looking at is potentially uh, for this to interoperate with APIs in in in, a, in such in the sense that uh, not only will the mindful API return you data about your status, but it will require it will return you the JSON of that particular certificate. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can so if so as a uh, organization that needs to verify, you can receive both of the person. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the data you can use in your systems. The JSON you can take and verify against uh, the, the 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 root of the ledger, for example. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm. this is some of our thoughts around mm. uh, how this might evolve. Mm. Well, thanks, thanks very much for that insight. Well, thank you much, and th thank you very much, uh, all of you, uh, Monica, Kendrick, uh, Laurentino, and Nick, for, for your insights. Uh, it's been really, really good to compare uh, approaches uh, across uh, different government technology organisations.